Hello, everyone. My name is Wahid Lutfi. I'm going to be uh, showing you how to install Python programming language, a Python interpreter in this case, on Windows platform. And the last uh, video, video number one, we discussed uh, how to do uh, Python programming on Windows. We uh, discussed everything you need to know about uh, Python programming. And then on this one, I'm actually gonna cover uh, video number two, which is installation and setting up uh, the environment, as well as a Python installation, installing IPython and installing JupyterLab. And if you uh, wanna install IDEs, I will uh, show you how to install IDEs as well. Uh, so we're gonna go through that uh, on this session. So in this uh, basic um, session, we're going to uh, just set up uh, the environment. Uh, in, uh, starting with installing Python, IPython, uh, which is uh, basically uh, pep install IPython and JupyterLab uh, using pep install. I'll be showing you those ones as well. So on a Windows terminal, last time we showed you how to open a terminal and how to open a, a command line. You're gonna use a terminal to uh, get into uh, either the idle uh, integrated development environment or um, IDE. Uh, so uh, one of these ones uh, you can use and you can install the GUI version of um, IDE, which is um, PyCharm or Visual Studio Code or Jupyter Labs or Jupyter Notebooks. And also the idle, which is the command line uh, that is uh, getting you into Python interpreter. And so uh, Python programming language on Windows platform. Uh, we have to go to the website. Python uh, website is uh, python.org, uh, which is a secure website. We're going to download the software uh, from Python, the current version, which is 3.12.0. And that's the latest as of November uh, 22nd today we're going to uh, use that one. And then um, we're also uh, going to install um, IPython using pep install in JupyterLab. So Python integrated development uh, learning environment is also called IDLE. And then the uh, integrated development environment IDE, uh, which is um, in this case, uh, we're going to use the uh, PyCharm, which is uh, built by JetBrains. Uh, and Visual Studio Code by Microsoft um, uh, Open Source uh, Visual Studio uh, Code, VS Code, and then Code Lite uh, for uh, Python, and then the Jupyter Lab IDE uh, that we are going to demonstrate. Uh, so, what is uh, Integrated Development uh, Environment IDE? Uh, it has a lot of tools, a lot of features that support source code editing for automation. So you can write your own uh, Python uh, program, and then you can just uh, create as many as you want and as fast as you want. That's why it is automated. It's tools that allow you to do syntax highlighting, intelligent uh, code accomplishment, and then um, refactoring support compilation. The refactoring support part is uh, sometimes you can use uh, other editorial like VI or Emacs, and then you can just um, update the changes uh, fast enough and then recompile your codes on IDE. But uh, since it, this is an interpreter, you're going to use the interpreter, Python interpreter, to uh, just uh, run it. Um, but if it was uh, like a, a C or C++ or um, any other uh, C-sharp uh, code or Java, that you have to compile it. Those are compile language versus um, uh, the Python, which is an uh, interpreter language. So um, it also has local build automation and debugging tools and testing. All of that one is part of the IDE. Again, um, thanks for uh, watching this channel. I'm going to now go to the lab session and I'm going to demonstrate uh, what we're going to do it. Last time we covered Python programming on Windows and Python programming, I'm sorry, Python programming on Linux and Python programming on Windows. And today we're going to just uh, 
continue on with the website. So if you look at this one, last time we covered this and that. And then also I'm going to uh, just uh, open up the website and uh, I type HTTPS for secure page, hypertext transfer protocol, uh, secure. And then um, I'm going to say python.org. So the python.org uh, page with a secure lock shows up, which is uh, certificate is installed. And it is going through encryption, which is very good for the website. You have download uh, documentation uh, here and then downloads and then other stuff that you can just go to the community and everything. So for the purpose of download, I'm gonna just uh, download the latest and greatest version, which is uh, right here it says Python download 3.12.0. If you click on that one, it gives you for different platforms. As you can see, it is um, giving you four platforms on the bottom here for uh, Mac, Windows, and um, Linux as well. So for um, you have also the source code. So I'm gonna do the Windows um, because it's a 64 bit. Mine, I'm gonna get the 64 bit. So let me just open a command prompt here. And then I'm gonna um, clear my screen here, cd to um, the current directory, clearing screen here. So if I just, uh, I'm on the DOS prompt, I'm gonna exit out of this, open a new one, cmd. And then I notice that by default, if I open my profile, it is uh, C colon users. So since I'm on the Windows operating system, as you can see, every time you open a command prompt, it just tells you that uh, it's a built version of 10.0 Windows uh, 11. But how do I know it's a Windows 11? Because I can run system info, find a strength slash I and OS name, and it will tell me that it is um, uh, Windows 11, as you can see here. And the name of it as Windows 11. You can also run it from the command line about uh, uh, your PC. And this one, it will just tell you that it is uh, a Windows 11. All the processor information, the name of the host, everything is there, uh, similar to the system info that they have. And then um, you can also get, uh, instead of find a string, you can do find and that would give you as uh, shorter information just for that OS name that you can see it. So uh, we know that uh, this one is uh, Windows 10 or well, Windows 11, clear the screen and then do a directory. Uh, host name is algorithm. So if I say system, let me clear the screen here, say system info, find uh, string slash i, and then I'm gonna uh, search for memory. This find the string command is going to filter out the output of this one to a shorter information and only show what is the string memory match. So right here, I can see that I have 32 gig <coughs> memory. Um, how do I uh, know um, what model I have? I have to do, a fine uh, model for the processor. Processor 64 bit, as I see uh, last time until 64 family. So uh, many uh, IT uh, 11 until uh, generation core processor. And also here, if I just say um, on the device manager, if I run the device manager, I can also get the detail of the processor and everything here as well. So right here, when I click on the processor, it says uh, 3.4 gigahertz um, processor, i7. And then if I just stay uh, here, search for a uh, processor or um, model, I did it and then uh, let's say processor, if uh, that information is there. Yeah, it is there. And then um, it is, um, and gigahertz, so 3.4, um, I can search for that uh, number. You can see, actually, let me search for 
um, model. I think the model was showing that three by four gigahertz and uh, um, yeah, it's right here. 3.4 megahertz, uh, which is uh, 3.4 gigahertz is actually because it's uh, approximately 3418 megahertz. Well, so uh, adding a 3.4, a thousand to a megahertz is gigahertz, 3.4 gigahertz. So we know that uh, it's a family 64 bit. So I'm gonna download the 64 bit here. But before I do that one, and let's clear the screen is here. We say Python, and then we say dash V, uppercase dash V. So I have a 3.10.11 uh, version. I can also say dash dash version. Whether I type in Python dash dash version, or Py dash dash version, or uh, Py dash V, Python dash V, all of those ones will reveal the same information there. So if I clear my screen and say, Python, you can see that I'm getting into 3.10.11. Um, if I say import sys, the sys module is loaded now, I can see the path of where Python is installed here. You can see that one. And then also I could say uh, sys.version, I could uh, get the 3.10 version information. Sys.version info, will also tell me the major number, the minor number, the micro version. So I could also say sys.executable to see the path of the actual Python executable.exact file, which is the actual interpreter in this case. And then sys.platform uh, will tell me it's a Windows 32-bit uh, uh, Python. So I can download the 32-bit or 64-bit it doesn't matter, um, but I'm gonna try first the 64 bit and then see what uh, is going to uh, benefit me or maybe um, it is not going to be running on it. Uh, with 64 bit, I should be fine, but let's try it. First 64 bit and then uh, the other version for some reason was 32 bit. So I'm going to get this one, Windows, uh, Let's see on here. Uh, this is 3.10.12. Uh, I'm going to say uh, when you go on the 64 bit here, Windows, you can see that size 3.4 embedded uh, in D. Let me just uh, see what other ones are there. Mac OS X 32, 32. Windows installer. I believe this one 3.12. AMD 64, advanced micro device. So let's try that one. Uh, we're downloading it right now here. And this one is going to go to the download directory. I can double click on it and to open it and run it. As you can see here, it uh, says this is um, the binary, but here it says add Python to path. So if I just open my command prompt here, uh, and then say path, this path is there. But if I just select that path up uh, the, to this, it has to add the new version in front of this uh, other Python version. So the uh, program that when it runs is gonna just start off with the new one. Also, if you didn't select this one, you can type in ENV environment, and then uh, on the run environment variables, and then open this and go to the path uh, setting environment variables and change the path, this one to add a, a new app. You click on edit and then just say new and then add the new one. But at this time, I'm going to select it because this option is available. So it makes your life easier, say add it and then say, uh, go ahead, install now. And then I'm gonna say, yeah, go ahead, uh, allow it. It's gonna try to install it. Uh, so while this one is running, Windows 3.10 and documentation starts 
And that you can see a 64-bit uh, version. It is getting installed. The 64-bit is basically much faster than 32-bit uh, register size. And so the operating system is 64-bit. We're going to install 64-bit. The 32-bit is for compatibility reason uh, for a 32-bit operating system, which is backward compatible. So we're going to uh, try this one. Uh, setup was successful, so it did install it. I'm going to close this one. And now uh, we're going to just open a new command prompt, new command prompt. And then here, uh, when I just open a new command prompt, let me uh, make the size bigger. I could just type in Python dash dash a version, and that's 3.12 already. Uh, you can see that it is already reflecting it. Uh, pi dash V is also uh, showing. Earlier it was showing 3.11. So now if I say uh, path, and you can see the path somewhere here on the path, if I just go uh, write this one into a file and say t.txt, let's say, and notepad t.txt. So a temporary file that I created here, if I just search for this one, let me make this one bigger. So you can see it is, uh, Okay, it's big enough. I'm going to um, make this a screen also uh, huge. So you can see here, if I search for find for uh, Python, the version that it's showing here under this is Python 3.12, as you can see. Since the path is uh, showing this path first, uh, automatically it's going to run this uh, Python and then I, for backward compatibility, if I want to use the other one, I can just use the 3.10 or whatever version was that one. Then I can go to that directory specifically and use it. Similarly on Linux, if you have to do this one, make sure your path is traversing it uh, correctly at the right uh, location where you expect it to see it. So that is good. And then I um, created this file for temporary to just show you. That's why I call it uh, temp.txt. I don't need it. I can always create it. So I'm going to delete that file. I don't have to create the uh, unnecessary files, but that was for demo purpose. So now we have uh, done it. Uh, let's just get into Python. You can see when I type in Py, it also drops me to 3.12 here. If I exit out of here, I can type in Python, it also drops me to 3.12. So you can uh, exit uh, or uh, quit, but make sure that you put left parentheses, right parentheses as a function and exit out. So that's how you get into Python and then get out by typing exit or uh, get into Python using Py and then um, type in quit. Either one of them will take you there. And then as you can see here, if I say pi and then say import sys, now sys.path, it has the entire path for 3.12 for this executable. So then I say sys.executable, uh, this is going to show you uh, the Python 34, uh, 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 64 bit in this case, uh, says the platform, it is uh, ex still 132. So even though the executable, it was 64, the platform is for Windows uh, 32. Sometimes uh, they call it in T for uh, Solaris, I mean, for uh, um, for Linux, it is POSIX, Mac is POSIX. So if I say import OS, OS.name, you can see it's NT. And then um, sys.version is also showing 3.12. Sys.version info is going to show you the de details on major and uh, minor and everything. So we got those ones uh, good. And now um, we can write a uh, clear screen, write a um, Python code, say print um, hello. Uh, word. So this is a simple um, program. 
that you could see. If I say name is equal Wahid, name is equal the string Wahid, then I could just say hello and name a word instead of word. I could say um, right here. I could say come a name. Then it will say hello Wahid. But if I just uh, wanna just uh, maybe change that word uh, Wahid to be all to lowercase, obviously I could say. Similar to uh, here, say name is going to print that one, name dot lower will print it to lowercase. It's an object oriented programming language. So if I just want to do everything to upper, then I could do that one. So print, uh, I could say hello, uh, and then uh, put the code here, and then say, um, name dot upper then it will just change that one to upper and it say hello wahi at the same time if you just um, do anything with that uh, name like type of that name is a string um, class and then if i say name and dir of name you can see that there's a lot of uh, uh, the string uh, methods and uh, the double underscore magic method and attributes that are attached to it. So any of those methods are object oriented. Name dot z file would be like one of the uh, method that you could use. Z uh, name dot upper name dot translate name dot title. All of that you could use that. Uh, similarly with the double underscore magic method. So, like for example, dir of this one in Python, you could get a dir uh, listing here, and then similarly with the doc string. So, name dot double the underscore doc will give you <coughs> that string uh, uh, documentation for magic. But notice that new line characters. If you don't want to see those ones with the uh, percentage, you have to do a print statement. And then now you're there. So earlier I was telling you that when you're on idle integrated uh, development learning environment. So when I go Python here, now I'm inside idle. And you can see that if I do a dir, I could get help on it. And if I just run into help, then I could say modules or keywords, anything I could just get a list of modules that are there. I could say keywords and I could say a plus or a asterisk. Anything that I search, it is going to show F statement, a while statement, a for statement. So these are the things that I'm going to discuss later. But at this time, I'm going to exit out of help and I could just also get help on the uh, for example, uh, dir, uh, say what are the help on dir, or help on double underscore build ends. So you can you can get a lot of help here, and for uh, inside Python idle, the integrated development learning environment. This is the Python uh, interpreter uh, prompt, and so if I say f and uh, name is equal Wahid, then print hello name. Uh, uh, let's do a F string. F, um, let's say hello, uh, and then name uh, else. Say, friend, um, I don't know you here. Yeah, you. So uh, since uh, I don't know the person name, and if it is not Wahid, I don't know the person name. By default, I could just say that one. So now this fun function uh, name did not recognize. So uh, I got out of name already uh, here. So if I say name, a name is not defined. Name is Wahid. Now I run this code again. 
since I'm inside the uh, interpreter, I have to do this uh, command again. And then once you are inside the uh, IDE, you can write the code. But if you want to do it um, outside of IDE, you have to actually write it into a file and then and just um, do the work uh, and save it. So right here, you can see that it's going to say hello, Wahid. And, uh, and there, but because I, I did not save it, uh, I have to recompile and uh, uh, I mean, interpret it every line by line every time I do it. So it is much better to write it into uh, a file and then run it in, in as a file. Let me show you how you do that one. So if I just uh, copy all these lines here and then say, exit out of this and I could say, uh, just in this directory, let me go to programs and then Python, uh, Visual Studio Code, and then um, just say, um, I'm gonna uh, write a notepad. You can use anything, notepad uh, hello.py. And then inside the notepad, I could paste that, uh, lines and then just take a get rid of the F state and the interpreter. So right here, and these um, dotted lines are the second uh, parameter for the um, prompt, the uh, pr prompt shell two. Prompt shell one is the first one uh, with the three greater sign and then the other one. So, Right here is the output. We don't need that one. Now we um, have saved it. Let me make this one a little bit bigger so you can see uh, the screen. This is what I have. If name is equal to print this one, else print that one. So I will save it since I named it correctly and exit out of this. Now clear the screen and then say type hello.py. I have that code. In order to run it, I have to say Python hello and dot pi. And then that one is now saying there's a typo because name is not defined again. So notepad hello dot pi. Now notice that this time, how easy it is. Name is equal uh, Wahid. And then I'm gonna put the string Wahid. So name is defined this time we run it. Sorry, um, I thought I was inside the VI. So I'm gonna save it and then uh, I'm gonna leave this one here. And so you can see that um, when we run it, it's gonna run and say, hello, Wadi. Now I come back in the editorial and then change this one to um, Mortazo Ali. So now it's gonna say, I don't know you even though it is my son, but you guys don't know him. So let me just uh, write this one, save it, and then we should get the else part of the code running. And then that would be actually another video, but I'm gonna cover it. Say, I don't know you. And if you wanna just write the person name, uh, say, I don't know you, uh, maybe, uh, and instead of I don't know you, since I know him, and say, you are a great stalker pillar. And then I'm gonna write a F function, F a string, and then I'm gonna just write here, say the name of the person that was passed on. So the F a string is using this a string, and then at the same time uh, is going to say um, that information here. So let's save it. And notice how fast that is the source code. It just says, you're a great soccer player, Murta Zohali. So this is how you um, can easily write a code in Python uh, with the uh, interpreter of your choice and then uh, code it here. So let's say I save it and then I just uh, say, uh, can I use the same code with another programming languages or with another ID, yes. So right here, if I just wanna uh, run the 
at low dot pi, and that program with the Visual Studio Code, since I have already installed it, I could say code at low dot pi. And what, it, what I'm saying here is that I use a code, Visual Studio Code, to open the file hello uh, dot five. And as you can see, I open hello dot five, the program here, but this time now I have a lot of the IDE features, which means I, I can uh, look at my source code and then uh, syntax highlighting is on, as I mentioned, and then I, I have a lot of uh, options here to just um, do the intelligent uh, source code um, uh, code completion. So if I just write something and then uh, don't know the name of the function or right away, it's gonna prompt me a lot of stuff. For example, let's say I say name dot, must notice as soon as I put dot, all these methods are available. So I don't have to memorize them. On the idle, I had to memorize them and understand them, uh, do a directory. Here I could do a, the same thing, I could say, uh, print, uh, let me see uh, here, say print type of uh, dirt, type of uh, name. So if I just uh, get this one, it will uh, run it and it will just give me an addition to this. And notice this one is automatically saved. So I don't have to go file save as or save uh, every time but automatically this is saved with and the new changes that are done. And here's the uh, code that I can just click on this run to debug it and compile it. And then right here, the output is showing that it's a string there. And uh, right away it says, um, you're a great software player, Morteza. So if I just say, and instead of this, and then I say, and instead of type, I say, show me all the functions that are available for that string, I could do that one, and I get a list of uh, functions uh, there. Um, so right here, notice that the code uh, modified, uh, but I, when I run it, it just it still gave me the older output. So I could say uh, run uh, Python code. Um, right here, it uh, should, uh, let me just save it. Maybe my um, charm is automatically saved and yeah. So right here, you have to actually say, run the uh, current code, uh, run file, run Python file, and then, yeah. So run, run Python file, and then you can see it uh, says that one. So if I just change this one to say, uh, print uh, name dot upper and just change it to upper and then also a name dot title. So we could just uh, do those two uh, to uppercase and also uh, uh, title it. T title meaning that um, you're going to just add uh, like uh, the first character as uppercase uh, there or capitalized uh, kind of things. But if it is a string, then it's gonna do that. And so um, when I run this one, notice here, and the uh, first name is uppercase, and then Murtaza Ali, here is also um, and, and done. So when I uppercase it, everything is uppercase. When I say it as, write it as title, the first character of uh, every word is up, uh, capitalized. And then if you just uh, print it on lowercase also, say name dot uh, lower, it will just do the same thing for lowercase. So notice I separate them by comma. This is the lowercase version. So you can do whatever you want with these codes. This is Visual Studio code that I have already run. So if I just close it here, and then I'm on this code and say, uh, open another um, code. I could just open the code for mat-demo1.py. It will open that file automatically. And it says that, okay, for item and range, this is an example of for statement between 10 and 50 with uh, increment of uh, step uh, 15. 
and uh, just use the effort string to print it. As you can see, it is going to give you an output. So when the number is 10, uh, 10 to the power of two is 100 and so on, all of that one. And then um, the same example, if I close this one and I say, um, okay, let's just run with math pow function. So clear screen type math pow 1.5. Notice that this one I'm using the math function as m imported and then m dot uh, power function item two, it will do it. So I can compile it here with Python 3 math pow 1.5. It will just do that one, give me that information. Or I could do uh, open it with code math pow 1.5. So inside here, you can also write new functions um, for each one of them. Uh, obviously for the code, I have to install and the extension for um, the extension for PyCharm, uh, I mean Python. So you uh, search for Python here, and then there are some of the extension I've already installed it. Intel since is installed Python, indentation is installed. A lot of the extensions are already installed here. So when you click on this one, it will say, it's already installed, do you want to uninstall it or disable it? But IntelliSense is also installed. So a lot of these features you have to do on Visual Studio Code or PyCharm uh, to make sure that PyCharm automatically is uh, there, but Visual Studio Code, you can do uh, extension for C, C++, and C Sharp, and, and all uh, kind of programming language just compilers as well as interpreter like Python. And then um, I'm gonna just uh, show you one other example here. If I close this one and I say code here, I don't have to open anything by default. It opens the last item that I did. If I close these ones and then I say, okay, let's go to the file. And then I'm going to press escape here and then just close this one. Now if it is this, uh, you could just say open a project file. So you can open a folder or open a file or something, or just create a new one. Uh, even if you wanna just open existing one, just you can say file, open file, and then just go to the directory of the file where you have your uh, code and just open it there. Or you could just say close this one and then just um, next to it, maybe you could open a new one. Let's say file, and then um, let me press escape here. Okay, file, and then uh, new file, but I'm going to use new Python file. So new Python file, I could just give it any name. So notice that uh, API key file, and uh, let me just uh, right here, um, I could just uh, give it any name, and this is says untitled. I could just right click and just uh, save as, and then uh, save it with uh, the name, uh, whatever I want. Or I say file and then uh, save here, and then uh, give it a name. So let's call it um, hello name. Uh, let's not call it hello, uh, hello. Uh, my web university, uh, my channel, hello, my web. So uh, I'm gonna uh, write that one dot pipe. So now I could say uh, print, uh, hello, uh, and then my web university. So you could just say uh, as simple as that one line, print a statement and then run it. And then it says that uh, uh, code exit uh, there. Let me um, press escape here. So I'm on this code. I have to say, run this code, run Python file. Now it's going to say, hello, my web university. So inside here, you have to say which one you want. If you want the other code here, you say, run this Python file, then it runs that one. So that is the, the trick that you make sure that whichever one you want to do it. And this terminal is basically a PowerShell terminal. 
So now you can say uh, get dash help. Um, let's say pro um, uh, get dash process. It will just uh, tell you the um, command like uh, commandlet of uh, get dash uh, commands will all give you all the command get dash command not commands. So clear a screen and like for example and get dash process will show all the processes and clear screen. I mean, there's a lot of partial command at this time. We don't need to show you everything on a PowerShell as well. But here I can also open a command prompt on uh, the DOS or uh, disk operating system windows. So now I can run directory slash uh, O colon D so I can see the latest files that I have uh, done it. So if I go to programs and then uh, Python and then Visual CD to uh, Visual Studio Code, clear screen directory. Notice that directories are here, directory slash W will give you a, a, a column wise uh, directory there. And if I just um, want to see like, for example, clear screen directory star.py, I can see them uh, there. Their screen directory slash o colon d star dot pi as also, and the last uh, file that I did was the last one written there. So here, if I don't need the terminal, I exit out of command prompt and exit out of this, and I'm um, here. The minute I run it, it automatically open my terminal again, and then I have other uh, consoles and debugging and output. You're welcome to uh, explore them, but when I go to um, actual um, training, I might either cover uh, Visual Studio Code or a PyCharm. So let's say I go here and say PyCharm. PyCharm is already installed, so it will open the ID uh, PyCharm. So if you don't have the PyCharm or Visual Studio Code, this is what you do. Say so just on google.com, type in Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio Code, it will just uh, show you this page, Visual Studio Code. Uh, and this is the basically code.visualstudio.com here. And then you can just download it. And uh, the version that is there is 1.8, I believe. Uh, somewhere I read that one is, yeah, 1.84. So um, I believe I have the same one. Let me just say code here. And then when you when it comes in, in order to find the version, you just go here under help and then uh, and get the about page and it tells you 1.84. That's the one uh, I have. So that is how you look at the Visual Studio Code. But if you wanna go to PyCharm, on PyCharm, you notice that I opened this one. I can uh, run this code uh, on PyCharm and I'll get the output as well here. And if I just want to open another file like uh, hello here, and then um, and just run that one, you will get the output of that one. But notice that it is not showing, it's showing the other one because the other one is active. So I have to say, and when I just go here, I say current file. And then the current file, now I just run it and I just run the current file. And then if I, uh, on the terminal, on the terminal, you could also get uh, to run the command uh, yourself. So you could just um, get it. Um, so uh, right here, you can see it's a PowerShell terminal uh, by clicking here, PowerShell. So if I say programs, uh, demo, sorry, uh, programs, uh, Python, uh, CD2, um, uh, Visual Studio Code, clear screen. Notice that these files are there. So every one of them that I run, I have to say Python hello.py. Then it will run that one. Uh, Python hello uh, my web uh, my web.py. Or um, do a Python math demo one.py. Uh, pi mat uh, pal one dot pi. So anything that you run, 
you either gave the interpreter Python or Py. And if you uh, had the shebang uh, Python version, you can also just run it uh, with the command line from here, say mat um, how one dot pi. And that will open the interpreter and uh, based on the association with the PyCharm or uh, Visual Studio code, then it will run it and uh, show you output. So I'm gonna exit out of this. We show you um, uh, the IDE for PyCharm as well as um, Visual Studio code, as well as um, getting into um, the Visual Studio code for download. Let's uh, show you how to undo um, PyCharm. JetBrains.com uh, for PyCharm is the website. So you go to JetBrains.com uh, right here. And then when you click on it, it comes out with this page. So I'm gonna accept all the terms. Here, when you say uh, the website is jetbrains.com slash PyCharm. Uh, JetBrains makes a number of uh, developer uh, tools. So when you come into developers tool here, you can see that it has uh, a number of them, including PyCharm. And then if you click on the PyCharm somewhere here, uh, it is uh, right here, PyCharm. You can see the icons is here. So you click on it. And then and the one that you want to download is not the professional one. The one you want to download is the community edition. PyCharm, uh, this is professional. The one uh, community is a uh, free uh, source, um, open source. So we, you could uh, use that one for student purpose. And uh, this is professional. Let me just see. If you don't see the word community here, you can always uh, do a control F search and then type in community, PyCharm community edition here. So there's two of uh, 25, uh, two of five. So I'm gonna just say, uh, click on this uh, community forum and right here is a free community is free. So you could just uh, get that one. And um, here is the uh, link that you can click on the download for the community. For professional, you click on here. And then once you click on it and uh, you uh, get it installed, uh, basically make sure the path is set. Uh, so whenever you type in path, if your PyCharm is finding the where the path is, uh, then it's gonna just and search for it. And similarly for the Visual Studio Code, similarly for uh, Python 3 then it's gonna run. So notice that PyCharm is on the community edition. This is under the bin directory here. So the PyCharm that I type in is in that directory. If I say CD to uh, bin directory here, you can see that uh, now PyCharm.exec is there, uh, PyCharm 64 bin. That is the one, same one as uh, PyCharm. So pycharm.batch, this is a batch script, uh, say py, pycharm.batch, and sorry, pycharm.batch, py, pycharm.batch, and that's the path for it, but it is actually uh, running uh, some of these Java path and other ones in order to uh, set those environment, environment variables. So, all you do is type in PyCharm and it will just automatically uh, just set the environment. Uh, you can also type in PyCharm.bad, exit PyCharm.batch, and uh, it will do the same thing there because that executable set your Java runtime environment and everything else. So that is uh, taken care of. Uh, what else we need to show you? Oh, and we need to show you, um, we showed you how to use Python. So and now I'm going to um, uh, change the prompt here and then CD to users, uh, Wahid, and then Python programs, and then Python, and then Visual Studio Code. So I'm on this screen here, and then uh, th these are the files here that we demo. 
now we can write um, also uh, uh, IPython programs to run it interactively, as well as uh, Jupyter Lab. So let's do the uh, Python. We did it already. So I can write, say Python hello the pi. It will just run that code. Uh, Python uh, math demo one dot pi. It will do that one. And then at the same time, uh, for Python, you can just get into the Python like that also. And then um, you could also say uh, pi minus c, and then run a command here. Say um, say print. And let's say hello a word. This is inline and one command that you can just run a Python uh, command like that. So any valid Python function in for statement, if statement, that you do after the minus C, it will uh, compile it for you, uh, interpret it for you, and will uh, give you an statement output. But normally you wanna put it into a file. So um, I'm going to show you a pep. A pep uh, is another thing. So like here, if I say clear screen, uh, pi dash v is a uh, Python version. Pep dash v is gonna show me the uh, Python install packages, uh, which is 23.2. Uh, and it is the same version uh, that is my Python 3.12 version for the Python 3.12 version. This one with that version also works. So if I just get a pep list, this is all the packages that are already installed on this environment that you can see here. Uh, one of them is IPython. So since I installed Python, IPython comes with it. But uh, a module like math and other ones that are part of the standard library as I cover them, they are available here. So whenever you say pi and then say import math, uh, as M, and now there are M, all the function that are with math is available. Help M, uh, you will get all the help functions on. So I'm gonna quit out of that one, but um, functions like, for example, NumPy, if NumPy is there, pep list, find a string, uh, string slash I and NumPy. If NumPy is there, then it, uh, you're gonna see the version av available. If not, since I have already installed it, it is available. But if not, then I have to uh, say a newer release of the is available. I could upgrade it with using this command, Python dash exec dash M meaning use the M module pep to install and upgrade pep. So I'm gonna run this one to uh, upgrade my pep, uh, make sure that it's, the latest and greatest successfully installed. And the next module that I wanna check here, I'm gonna say pipe uh, pet list and then find a string slash i and um, ipython. ipython is the package for inter uh, interactive python, it's not showing. So I'm gonna say instead of um, list, I'm gonna say install. This is gonna use pep uh, install to install IPython. So now IPython is installed and for uh, 3.12, I can just uh, get that version as well. Um, so notice that it says that successful install. So now if I use that previous command uh, there that previously was not showing, now it shows 8.12, 8.17.3. So I can get into IPython by typing IPython, that's interactive Python. Here I have a list of aliases, directory, clear screen, a lot of commands that are there, I could do it. But still I could say import OS and say um, CMD is equal, let's say directory uh, command. And then I say, um, let's say a stream, as they call, and then instead of post name, let's just run the directory command, a CMD command, and then say 
output is equal as stream.read and then print output. That will just uh, run the directory command. Uh, similar to like running the directory uh, as a function, uh, if I do that one, it will just go inside the Python interpreter. But the other one, I could just run uh, a lot of them. So here I could uh, do a list. Let's just do one list here as a demo. So I'm gonna clear the screen. I'm gonna say uh, my uh, commands. Uh, I'm going to have all these commands and that I wanna run those commands here. So now CMD, um, I have uh, commands and this is the output. So I wanna run date slash T and then host name, calculator, notepad and everything. So I could say for CMD and commands, and then I have run this one uh, on another demo. So it already uh, displayed it for you, which is nice. Uh, it, uh, have it in the cache somehow it uh, reads it for me. So uh, that's the part of the IDE for um, IntelliSense uh, helper, right? So for CMD and commands, I'm going to say, um, Output is equal. Uh, first, I have to do a, a, a stream dot open and then commands, and then output is equal that, and then print output. So notice that and this is uh, what I'm saying. For each of these commands, uh, oh, use the operating system that uh, process open or pipe open for the individual command, which is date slash T or host name or calc or so on. And then uh, as I put it on the stream, then I read the stream, which is the output and I put it, save it into the output uh, variable. Then I print the variable. Now notice this is the notepad. So a notepad is uh, this, I'm gonna close it. And this is the calc uh, another notepad uh, which is uh, that, and this is the calculator, and all the commands are there. And this is the, the first command date, and this is the algorithm, the host name. So if I want to shorten that command here, I could just say uh, whatever um, on the command lines. Uh, so commands was this, uh, sorry, commands uh, or this, so I could say, um, let's say I want to save the commands into CMD, CMD, um, CMDs. I could say um, commands, I'm going to say zero column two. This one will save uh, only the first two commands. And so uh, you're saying that this is an array. I want to start with zero element and then one element. So I start with zero and one, and then the two is not inclusive. So that is excluded and then uh, it will give you the commands. So now I can run the for statement um, here and instead of commands, I could say CMDs. CMDs, the rest of them are fine. And now I only run the output of those two commands. And if I just do the same thing here, and then I could just say f a string, I say uh, the output of your um, uh, CMD else, and then uh, give the output, and then um, is um, and then right here I'm going to give the output like this and uh, do that. Now say the output of your command date slash T is Friday and then the output of your host name is algorithm. So you can do that on how interactive, how nice it is, right? So I'm gonna exit out of this one. There's a lot of other um, uh, thing, uh, list of magic, uh, list of magic and um, uh, cells uh, parameters that I'm gonna show you also on, um, on um, Jupyter Lab, 
And so let's uh, say pep install Jupyter Lab. Uh, Jupyter Lab. So if I do that on Jupyter Lab, it will go try uh, try to install it if it is not already there. But if it is um, found, it will just say uh, requirement already met. Since this is a newer version, it's downloading it and installing it. As you can see, all the um, parameters are getting installed, all the um, Jupyter core, which is uh, a number of them. So uh, this is uh, taking a little bit time to finish it off with the last part. As you can see, it downloads uh, a lot of them. Um, let me just go to the bottom. Uh, yeah, it is done now. And now notice that this is done. I can say uh, pep list and then find a string slash i. And then if I look for Jupyter, the main one is Jupyter core. Uh, by Jupyter core getting installed, you get a, a Jupyter client, you get a Jupyter server, and a lot of other events at Jupyter lab. So in order for me to run it, I could type in Jupyter lab. I'm sorry. And Jupyter Lab, and then uh, maybe Dash Lab. Sometimes the argument, yeah, Dash Lab would work, and then um, it will just open it for you. So uh, local host uh, port 8888, and this is the default one that opens a Jupyter Lab interpreter. At this time, I'm just inside the PowerShell terminal inside Jupyter Lab. And then if I want to exit out of this one, you can see here it has shut down and log off. But at this time, I'm going to say uh, open a new one. And when you click on the, the new tab, you have an option of Python, uh, IPython kernel. And you have an option of kernel, um, console uh, three, a terminal, which is this one. Um, so if I click on another terminal, I open that one. But if I want to just uh, go on tab and just say open a Python uh, uh, Jupyter Lab, now the cell is open. So this is the current cell, and I can write any command here: import OS, and then OS dot system, and then I say host name. Just tell me the host name of the OS, and then run this one. It says zero because uh, it is uh, not trying to execute this one. If I just say print os.system, and that um, function returns a value here, but it is not giving me a return value of zero, meaning, yeah, I ran the command was successful. If I just uh, give a garbage in the information here, that's not a command, it's going to say, one meaning that it was not run successful. But what I want to do is I want to say, uh, rather than doing that one, I say, um, let's say here, I say uh, a stream is equal OS dot process open, pipe open. And then here I write the host name here and then say um, output. As they call the string dot read, and then say print output. Now, um, when I run it, this time it's gonna give the name of the this. So here, if I just run a command like in this lookup google.com, then I just run it and run the name server lookup on google.com. And if I just want to run a directory command. Uh, on the current directory, it just runs the directory command here. So if I just run a OS command, that is a Windows command, obviously it runs Windows command. So if I just say help on a Windows command, it just run the help command uh, helps. But if I just run a, something like get PowerShell, get dash um, commands, the command, that, that is a PowerShell command. It's not going to just uh, give me an output. In order to do that, run, I have to say PowerShell in front of it. Then it will just uh, run that one. And um, 
it is a little bit time consuming. So um, let's try the PowerShell uh, itself to see if it opens PowerShell. Yeah, so that is a little bit uh, of a delay. Maybe it is uh, opening it. Maybe I have to wait on to it. Um, the way you do it normally, you just open a terminal here and then you, here you say PowerShell. And then if your command works there, most likely it's gonna work. It did not uh, work, I, I, I mistyped it, PowerShell. PowerShell is opening PowerShell. So if I say PowerShell get dash command, it should uh, get dash health uh, get dash command. Let's see, yeah, that does not, so maybe the syntax is minus C or um, or get command something, but um, PowerShell and then get dash help oh, inside here would work and get dash command would work. So the PowerShell command, I must have had it on another command prompt uh, there with a different syntax. Um, so let me just uh, find out that one quickly. So if I go inside here, inside here, and then in directory store the PowerShell, PowerShell. Okay. Um, I think it is something that with PowerShell, um, PowerShell um, directory, Windows programs, and then Maybe it's another um, directory demo images. Um, store PowerShell. I'm quickly uh, searching for something and uh, I don't know where I uh, have it uh, at the moment. Maybe under programs of oh, PowerShell, PowerShell here. Nothing here, and then get into programs. Um, Python, PowerShell, PowerShell, CI uh, root programs all over the places. So uh, here, uh, if demo dot PowerShell uh, store PS one. No, that's not the one that I wanted to do. No. Uh, change directory users y e um programs directory and store power shell store store this will search for anything with the power shell and uh, there um cmd um directory I'll show, let me just uh, see for one second. Okay, so um, I figured out the issue. Uh, when you are looking at PowerShell command, you can just um, open a terminal here. And if you just uh, say inside PowerShell, you could say, uh, CM, let's say I go on CMD, I could say PowerShell dash question mark, uh, power, I'm sorry, sorry. Um, PowerShell dash dash question mark. Um, it's gonna give me help on it. Let me just type it correctly. Dash dash help, I believe it is. No, um, PowerShell slash question mark yeah slash question mark notice that um, the syntax is uh, slash question mark but it's going to say that uh, you can run a, a command dash command and then after that one so inside those prompt inside those prompt i can get the help of by saying power shell dash command uh, get dash help and then get dash process to get the output of the process. 
Similarly, if I just, uh, instead of this one, I say get dash commands, I can do that one uh, for all the commands. Uh, oh, command, not commands uh, without uh, S. You will get that one. So inside the uh, PyCharm, uh, not PyCharm, inside the Visual Studio Code, let me close this one, close this one. I don't need any of these ones. Okay, where's uh, my, um, right here, PyCharm. So uh, what the, this is a, a Windows uh, DOS command prompt. So I can type in uh, on the, uh, on directory command and I get the output of directory command. And if I just write the uh, other commands, like uh, let's say, um, help copy command, it will just give me the output for the copy uh, syntax. Similarly for the move command, it will do that one. But if I just uh, say, okay, how about PowerShell? I will say PowerShell and remember there's a syntax a dash command and then followed by get dash help and get dash um, command. So uh, in this case, if I want to get help on get dash command, and then I say dash command in front of here. But if I just uh, want to say, just run any command here with PowerShell, like run the get dash process, then I can do that one. And instead of that get, get dash process, would work or just PS for uh, process. You see that all the process are working. Yeah, I, if I wanna just get um, the alias, PS would also work. So then and the alias for um, um, get a child item, which is a directory a command that will just do the directory on PowerShell. So this is uh, how nice it is with the OS module. Inside Python, you could run the commands, you could get it. And then if you wanna just say, um, OS dot uh, get the current working directory, uh, uh, you can get that one also, you can see on this. Um, and then if you wanna run commands like uh, other environment variables and other ones, you could do all of that uh, as well. Um, but I'm going to cover those ones on a separate module, otherwise this uh, video is gonna be so long. So uh, let's just, um, inside here, you can say also name. you can see that it is uh, NT. And then um, based on the uh, if NT, you could say if um, OS.name is equal, equal uh, NT, and T then um, run the OS dot process, uh, let's say output or a stream is equal OS dot process open, pipe open, and then just say uh, run the uh, command, like for example, uh, what other command we did not do um, on this one. Maybe we say, uh, make their test one. So we create a directory and then uh, say uh, stream uh, output is equal to stream dot v and it's uh, say print output. I'm going to show you two ways here. So this one, since well, I'm going to make the directory, the output of this one is silent. So I run it, it just make the directory test one. Now I have to see where I created it by going into the uh, terminal. So inside terminal here, see uh, the directory test one got created here. So if I just say rm dir test one, now there's no directory test one. I run this code again and say run it, and then uh, come back here and do a directory test one is there. I, I just uh, change this one to test two. Uh, I run that one, it will create the test one as well as test two. Directory test the star will show test one and test two. And then if I just wanna say, um, 
remove remove um, test remove a uh, directive since it's empty I can do a RM and there remove there test uh, two if I just want to only delete test one but not test two I could do that uh, as well so not test test one is deleted programmatically now directory start test start test two is there but if I want to delete test two just change the test to test two and then run it and now um, there's no uh, directory called that this to either. Okay, we covered enough uh, for this uh, demo. I'm going to uh, have a Linux version of this one also to do the same thing on the Linux platform. So you're uh, well versed on both of them. And uh, Python programming is easy. You just have to understand the modules and the, the structure and the um, and the data structures, which are a set, list, uh, tuples, data dictionary, object-oriented programming like classes and um, all these other ones, uh, strings and integer, uh, all of those ones are part of the Python functional programming as well as object-oriented programming. I'll cover all of them and then uh, you will be very uh, well uh, at your work and at uh, your um, school, anything that you can do uh, to get your job done. So I'm going to close this one, save file, shut down here. And then when you do shut down, uh, now this one is done. You can close this browser. And then uh, going back to Jupyter Lab, uh, this one, I did not open it here. I'm going to close it here. Notice the shutdown of the extension on Jupyter Lab here that I stored it. That was the command Jupyter Lab. And then it is shut down. So I'm going to close this browser also. Coming back here, let's go to uh, the, uh, my web university. So you're welcome to watch our videos and uh, subscribe. And this is uh, the website. And so by default, if you go to my web university, you will see a lot of videos here that are posted. And this one will also be posted. So video number one for the Windows and then Windows and Linux is already there. Video number two for Windows will be posted tonight. Uh, please make sure that uh, you watch the videos, make some nice comments. I see a lot of people are watching uh, some of the videos. One of uh, the video that is uh, from uh, Zero to Hero, that one has been watched uh, lately very well and then I think this other video that I posted that six hours and 18 minutes, the entire Linux Ubuntu, you should watch that one. If you're a Linux admin or sysadmin or junior admin, senior, you will get an expert level from this one as well as junior level, as well as a novice level. So it's from uh, A to Z almost. Uh, yeah, I cover six hours, 18 minutes on this video and then uh, six hours and I mean uh, two hour, uh, about an hour and a half on that one all together is uh, eight hours so and then and the playlist um, I have a lot of them that you can see and uh, one of the video that I told you is about four hours this uh, full course on uh, RAL and release of uh, Red Hat 9 and that one is a very good uh, course that you should be watching it. It's about four hours long and you will learn a lot from it. Uh, full course from zero to hero. Nobody's at the zero level, everybody's at novice or something. If you heard the name Linux or Unix or uh, Windows or PowerShell, whatever, you are not at the zero level. You are at some level. So how you wanna just uh, move up your skill set is all, entirely up to you. I have a lot of documentation for you. You don't have to buy books and then you can just go on my website uh, right here and just search for um, the second page here. This book, I wrote it online, The Direct Path to Linux Ubuntu. It's about 11 chapters. For each chapter, um, it's another book. For example, if you wanna go uh, the Red Hat Enterprise Linux, about 12,000 uh, PDF files here. They're all available for you. 
you just click on it and just uh, read, start reading the manual pages and a very nice format and you can just get it. Similarly, if you are in Linux Ubuntu, you get it here. Um, so about 6,500 uh, technical documentation in Linux Ubuntu. And if you're on a uh, Rocky version of Linux, it's about 11,000 here. And then if you are on PowerShell, it's also, I have it on uh, chapter three and four and other ones. Right here, if you click on the Linux Windows PDF technical, it shows about 12,747 uh, PDF files in Linux, uh, Red Hat, uh, and this is for um, Rocky, and this is for Ubuntu. Uh, for PowerShell, I have about uh, 1,500. All the commands that I showed you, everything is online for you. You don't have to be sitting in front of a Windows machine or Red Hat machine or uh, Linux machine in order to get them. Uh, I even have... Um, uh, all the files for them. So if you click on this one, it will um, uh, graphically it. displace the folder structure of a drive or path. Tree, drive, path, F, I'm pause A, it. F. So there's a lot of uh, technical documentation as well as more than a thousand videos here that you're welcome to uh, study for your computer science major. If you're a computer science major, this is a one-shot place that you can just come in and everything's for free, provided to you to help you out. Take care. God bless you all. Love and peace to all humanity uh, and humanitarian causes. Uh, and support the peace and no war, uh, nowhere. Uh, war is bad for all of us. War is never good. Uh, we should all uh, have good uh, peace uh, everywhere. Take care. Bye-bye.